Hey y'all, welcome back to Reddit to Wire. Well, as if it wasn't hard enough to pick a pick five sequence at Keeneland, you add weather into the mix and it's going to make for a pretty wild Lexington pick five. Uh, hopefully we'll get the races on the turf, but if we don't, uh, it's really going to add to the intrigue and it's going to make for a wild one. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a look at it and uh, hopefully we can come up with a winning strategy. So here we go. The Lexington pick five is... Uh on Saturday's card at Keeneland and comprises races 7 through 11. And uh, we do know that uh, it's been raining down at Keeneland. And uh, thank you for those of you who have uh, reached out and uh, apprised me of that. And uh, it is expected to continue on Saturday. So uh, th this is a little dubious as far as some of the turf races, of course. Uh, you'd like to think they're going to run the Jenny Wiley, but uh, uh, maybe not. I mean, we'll just have to see. But uh, all the races, of course, we have to handicap as if they're going to be on the turf. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to do here, just in case anyone's wondering. The first leg is case in point, the Giants Causeway Stakes. And it's a grade three. It's the seventh race run of five and a half furlongs on the turf for three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. And we got a big field, as we often do in turf sprints. Um, the thing to me that strikes... Uh, more than anything else that I that I notice is you've only got a couple confirmed front runners, BG Warrior and Kissed by Fire. Those are horses that need the lead, that that's where they do their damage. Of the two, I like BG Warrior a lot. Uh, has a better post position. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in here really is going to challenge for the lead. And let loose, I think this one has been progressing nicely and is getting steadily better and I think this one can just take this one all the way um, I really like BG Warriors chances at 12 to 1 it's more if you look uh, the, there's a lot of horses here who oddly for a turf sprint who linger um, who like to rate and it, you know we as we know turf sprints you get on the lead and that's it usually um, very rare to see a horse come from behind to win uh, these and uh, if they do it's usually right on the lead or stalking just behind so uh, to me with the tactical advantage of being more inside and being the the, uh, the inside speed nothing to uh, uh, BG Warriors inside is uh, wants to go early uh, I think there's some big advantages here and I, I really like BG Warrior now if we look at Roses for Deborah obviously sticks out um, the, the problem is with her uh, is that I'm, this might be a little short as far as the distance goes. I think I like her a little better at six furlongs. And you can say that for a few horses in here, really. Um, and Christoph Clement does not have a great record at Keeneland, uh, he, uh, which is uh, also pretty interesting. And so um, this one, if she runs her race, I mean, I think she certainly is a logical win candidate. Um, I'm just the little, I, watching her in a couple of starts, one thing I did notice is she breaks fine. Um, and I don't want to say she breaks poorly and she doesn't break slowly. She breaks fine. But then once she gets out of the gate, she doesn't keep going. She sort of lingers a little bit or, or uh, settles in. And I think that's death in this race, particularly, uh, because um, with the lack of early speed, you've got to be right up on the leaders and you've got to be pressing hard and taking back a little bit or, or just not necessarily advancing. And I hope I'm explaining this right. If you go back and watch her last race, that's kind of what she does. Um, that, may, that may cost it. It almost like she has to re-rally, in other words. This is a good horse. I don't want to say she isn't and she could possibly win this but I just have a feeling the race shape isn't necessarily working in her favor um I'll mention Love Reigns because he's a she's a Wesley Ward and you know um a lot of people uh, will be betting her for that reason at Keeneland uh, I think this distance is too far I also think that Wesley Ward's you know, generally where their advantage lies is the fact that he gets them out of the gate and they just fire and can blow a field away. Well, Love Reigns doesn't do that. Love Reigns tends to run from off the pace. And as we've seen, her numbers really aren't so great uh, and haven't been. 
Um, and uh, she's a fairly inconsistent horse, and I don't just don't think she stacks up here, and I think she's going to be a major league underlay, so I'm tossing. I uh, just want to make that clear right off the bat. Um, Oof, uh, we, you know, this it's hard not to like this horse. And what coming back to five and a half furlongs after running at a route, uh, the route to sprint angle, I always like. This one certainly has a lot of grit. And I think uh, five and a half might be a little short. I think better, maybe better at six furlongs. But um, at eight to one, I think you're getting a nice price. And uh, in this field, I think can, uh, can factor probably underneath more than anything else. But um, it, it, I think she lo- merits logical consideration. Uh, Secret Money, I kind of like as well if you if you want to find a later runner. Uh, she's going to have the little bit of a of jump on Bling, uh, being a little closer to the pace than perhaps Bling will be. And um, I think Bling is a little more pace dependent. Uh, Secret Money, to me, has, has good back class and has shown that she can win uh, and beat some good horses. And um, I think that... Um, She's coming into this race just fine, and at fifteen to one, I think you're getting fine value uh, in a race that um, is, I don't know if there is a whole lot to be honest. I mean, the the ones that you know, there, there's uh, um, I think BG Warrior to me perhaps is the best value for the potential to win the race overall. Uh, but Secret Money offers it well and will be coming from off the pace. Same thing with Bling. Um, I don't think Bling may not get the pace that uh, that she needs to run her best race. Um, and at six to one, I think it is a bit of an underlay. I don't like the. I think this race just does not set up for the late runners at all. And so, to me, if I'm gonna, uh, I think BG Warrior is the one I want in this race. And to be honest, I, I mean, if I can't really, I mean, I would almost single, and mainly because. We've got the threat of rain, and this is a uh, not the easiest of sequence. Just throw out a little idea there, so you know, kind of an all or nothing type of uh, theory. But uh, BG Warrior, I like a lot to win this race, and then maybe uh, Roses for Deborah, perhaps, um, and maybe an outside shot for for Secret Money or Oof. Leg two is an optional claimer for 100,000 non-winners of four lifetime, and it's the eighth race. It's running a mile and a 16th for four-year-olds and up. And I got to tell you, I don't like any horse in this race. Not one. There's just nothing in this race. I mean, it, I cannot believe this is in the sequence. If Every single one of these horses has major league issues and vulnerability. So really all you can do is sort of try to find the ones with the least amount of vulnerability. Now, (laughs) we've mentioned Kenny McPeak quite a bit. And one of the things that he kind of does very effectively, he always zigs when everybody else zags. And a lot of times his horses just sort of show up when you least expect it and run a race. And that, I think, is the, this race fits him to a T. Now, I frosted departure. I've always liked as a horse. I think has shown a lot of grit. I remember that Southwest Stakes last year in the mud, uh, running a really good second to Arabian Night. No threat to win whatsoever. But if it's going to be wet, I kind of remember that. And I also love frosteds. Generally, tend to be fighters, and uh, doesn't necessarily come into this race in the greatest of form. But you know what? None of them are really. In all honesty, um, you know, Gilcrease is trying to root for the first time. And and uh, uh, Howling Time and Giant Game, the two Dale Romans, uh, they almost cancel each other out because they just both want to go up to the lead. And I don't think either one of them can sustain it. Uh, I mean, Giant Game will probably be, if anybody's going to be on the lead other than Transect, um, but he needs to settle, and if he gets any type of pressure, it's game over. So he's gone. Uh, Brigadier General's just the form isn't very good coming into this race, and Transect I really just think is an underlay in this field. Uh, I you, you can't take chalk in in a race like this. Classic Catch you sort of have to throw in the mix. He's going to be the favorite, yeah, okay. But he's another one. He's wildly inconsistent, 
and uh, coming off the bench, I mean, just don't know. Uh, I guess he's logical, but uh, I'm throwing in Hayes Strike because that's another Kenny McPeak, so I want double my money with two Kenny McPeaks and have a shot that one of them is going to uh, run a good race. That's really it. Honestly, I, I this, this is just a really, to me, this is a really bad race. And it's really hard to find any, but anything to hang your hat on with any of these horses. Hayes Strike is, is at a disadvantage because of the late running style. But in a race like this, he comes the closest to being in decent form of any of them. And, you know, that's going to certainly mean something. Uh, and at 8-1, to one, you're getting a decent price. So, um, again, this is, uh, I, I wouldn't, to be honest, I wouldn't say I have a high degree of confidence on this race the only thing you can say is the race shape looks like there's going to be a fair amount of early pace so uh horses coming from off of it perhaps will have an advantage and if that's the case uh, i'll try to get some value home with hayes strike is probably the one i'd be leaning to the most uh but again this is a pick em. i mean there's just uh uh <laughs> there's just not a lot of form to uh, to get excited about here Leg three is the Jenny Wiley Stakes. It's a grade one. It's the ninth race on the Saturday card, running a mile and a sixteenth on the turf for four-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. And uh, hopefully, if there is to be a turf race on Saturday, given the weather possibilities, uh, this one will be it. This is a uh, this is a nice field. Uh, you got a lot of horses coming off the bench, uh, which is it, and not just you know a month off of some extended layoffs. So it's interesting from that perspective. Uh, if you want a more in-depth analysis, I can encourage you to take a look at my individual posting on this. Uh, English Rose, I've seen, uh, I did see run. It's the Charlie Appleby uh, import and uh, won her last ra last race and uh, overseas. Uh, I didn't get that like wow factor watching her run. I thought it was very workmanlike. Uh, she's sort of a grinder. And that tells me that she's beatable under the right circumstances. So uh, English Rose, I think Charlie Appleby's record speaks for itself. You just sort of have to use. But uh, I don't think it's necessarily a lock uh, that she's going to take this one down. Surge capacity we haven't seen for quite some time. But I've always really liked this horse. Uh, ever since Saratoga, rose very quickly into a into a really nice horse. Uh, the one thing about surge capacity, I do notice that uh, she ends up on the rail quite a bit, and I do wonder if going to the outside might sap her strength a little bit. But this is a nice horse, and uh, I really like in this spot. Uh, I think that she's got the. Uh, there's not a lot of pace to run to, but she'll be up near whoever decides to take the lead and may get the jump on some of the others. So uh, I think surge capacity looms very logical. Didia has been running it outside of her wheelhouse for the last three races and has still been competitive. Uh, she's been running at a mile and a quarter. A mile and a sixteenth is her distance. She's five for five uh, at it, and we're back at it here today. Uh, this is a really nice filly. Uh, she just she brings it every single time, and she's a logical selection in here. There's not a lot of thought about it. Uh, Butte Cache uh, didn't run too bad, I didn't think, last time, and looms as one of the Chad Browns in here. And as we've noted, that a lot of times when you have these races, when Chad Brown has three or four horses, it's the one you don't expect who ends up running a decent race. And I think that's Butte Cache here. Uh, Fluffy Socks, I didn't like the uh, Hillsborough over at Tampa at all. I thought that whole race sucked. And Gina Romantica, I think, is one that takes a little while to get going. Uh, over the course of the year. She got very good at the end of last year, but I'm just banking she's going to need a race. Uh, certainly, and, and the three to one, I don't know if I want her coming off the bench like that. And I think I can get better value with a surge capacity if I'm going to pick a Chad Brown. So, um, and I, you know, the other thing is uh, the late runners, I don't think are going to, uh, are, are kind of at a disadvantage here because of the lack of, of race shape um, and uh, so fluffy socks and star star fortress we're just not sure about yet she seems to be coming back 
you know, that Cardinal was such an awesome race and she just sort of bounced off of it, but seems to be building back into form. But we really don't know what we have yet. And uh, I don't think this race sets up well for Star Fortress. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to do. I mean, I'm going to keep it short here. I think to me, I like surge capacity to take this one down. Uh, but Didier to me and uh, English Rose is certainly one you have to consider. And then maybe you think about Butte Cachet just for value more than anything else, probably more likely underneath in the exotics. Leg four is the Lexington Stakes. It's a great three. It's the 10th race run at a mile and a 16th for three-year-olds. And this represents the last shot uh, for a couple of these to have a chance to get into the Kentucky Derby. And we'll take a look at the field. Uh, there's, um, I'm surprised they didn't run this uh, race in Florida. Uh, I said before, you know, the asterisks are all the horses coming from Florida. Um, most notably, Hades. Uh, I'm throwing Hades out. I did not like that Florida Derby at all. This is the first race uh, Hades is coming out of Florida. The fields have not been great there, and I've, I've generally thought this horse was overrated uh, all the way along. Uh, I think they're going to try to put this one up near the lead. There isn't a lot of uh, early pace in this race. I think it'd probably be competing with Lucky Jeremy to get the lead, but I don't expect on short uh, rest this one to be a factor in this race. If you note, after the Holy Bull win, they skipped the Fountain of Youth to run in the Florida Derby, so maybe this horse needs a little bit of time. More than anything else, the fact that they chose to rate in the Florida Derby, uh, which makes sense with you know because of uh, the, the presence of uh, fierceness, but it also tells you maybe that they have some thoughts that this horse maybe has some limitations. Uh, so I, I just don't think this is a very good scenario for Hades. I just want to point that out uh, right off the bat. Lucky Jeremy showed me something in the Jeff Ruby. Uh, ran on the front end, I thought, didn't run a bad race at all. And uh, is a little better than just a horse from New Mexico, I think. Showed some pluck. Uh, and I think that this one can stick around on the front end. Uh, without a lot of early pace in this race, I think can maybe hang around. I don't think has the top end to win it, but I think it certainly linger in the exotics for sure. Uh, footprint is again the Kenny McPeak factor uh, at Keeneland. Uh, this one has been lingering in the allowance levels, and really the question I have is the will to win. I, I've seen a lot of races where it looked like this horse should have won and did not. Uh, has quality. Um, but is really more a horse I'd consider for underneath. Uh, would need a lot of things to go wrong to win this race. And again, I think it's more the will to win with this one for anything else, but is good enough to get into the exotics. And here's our friend, the wine steward. We've been waiting all year to see this one run. Uh, only getting 20 points in the Lexington. It's probably a foregone conclusion that, that the wine steward, they're not thinking, can get into the Derby. It would uh, probably need a lot of defections. But it is the debut for this year. I've always liked this horse. The progression at two was excellent. This one has grit, uh, loves to compete, loves to win, but has been off since November. And that's a long time. Um, Mike Maker, I would never... Uh, he knows what he's doing, and this horse is good enough, perhaps, just on class to win this race after a long layoff, but I just have a feeling this one might need one. That's only my uh, my thinking. It's uh, every, every horse we've seen who's come off a long layoff, none of them have fired. And granted, they're all different, and it's all case by case, uh, but Mike Maker's not necessarily known as a great trainer getting his horses fresh. And if you consider there's no thought of the derby here, then maybe this is just a tune-up, and he's thinking, okay, well, class-wise, maybe, uh, maybe the wine steward can get up and win this. So I'm just not as confident with the wine steward in this race, although I really like the horse and, and certainly is one you have to use. Which leads us to our two late runners, Encino and Liberal Arts. Uh, I think it's a very good sign that Encino was scratched out of um, the... Uh, uh, the bluegrass stakes to run here. You know, he has the opportunity to score more points, uh, 20 points or 10, as opposed to uh, maybe missing the board in the bluegrass because it was a deeper field. And you had Sierra Leone who runs the same way. Uh, problem is you've got liberal arts in here who does the same thing as well. So 
Uh, but anyway, uh, Encino really seems to have woken up since getting around two turns. I really like that Battaglia uh, running on synthetic uh, was uh, a, a very solid effort. The, uh, dirt, I don't think it's going to be a problem. The pedigree says that it won't be, and I don't think Brad Cox would, would put this horse in the race if there was any thought he couldn't run on it. So uh, Encino, to me, is very logical. He does have the—I uh, uh, think he is on the rise— uh, the problem is, again, you've got another closer in liberal arts here. Um, and just a, a, a tiny little thing. I don't think it diminishes Encino's chances terribly much. But when you do have a couple of closers in the back, a lot of times that can create some traffic issues. And again, not having a horse uh, dedicated to being on the front end here, I'm not sure there's going to be pace uh, to run to, not necessarily thinking that Encino is pace dependent, but being a late runner, it certainly helps. Um, I think Encino is certainly a horse to consider here. I think there's one that y you definitely uh, need to use. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it, it's a three headed monster to me. It's Wine Stewart, Encino, and Liberal Arts. Liberal Arts had a shit race last time, it had all kinds of trouble. Um, and still kept on. And that's what you like to see more than anything else. That was second off the bench. Uh, didn't run a bad Southwest Stakes first off. Now you're coming into this race third off the layoff. And um, I think this horse, uh, you know, it, 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 to me has shown a lot of quality. I'm not sure if, if he is uh, necessarily on a par with the best three-year-olds but I think he's maybe in that second tier uh, and I think has room to improve and move forward that was his MO at two got progressively better and I think there's no reason to expect that this that liberal arts won't run well here it is a little short um, coming off the uh, the Arkansas Derby but uh, I, I think I think this one will be up to it and this isn't the greatest of fields so uh, to me, this is a three-headed monster. You've got the Wine Steward, Encino, and Liberal Arts. One of those three. <laughs> That's that simple. The final leg of the Lexington Pick 5 is an allowance N1X for 110000 Non-win is a two lifetime. And it's the 11th race on the card. Running a mile and a 16th on the turf for three-year-olds. And this is a corker. To say the least, you've got 16 horses. Obviously, there's some anticipation of weather, um, and we've tried to account for that in this race. I think this is one in particular uh, where um, we we have to sort of go twofold, going on or off the turf, uh, in keeping with our strategy. If it stays on the turf, um, I don't really like any of the front runners. Um, St. Armand's Key. Uh, is probably going to screw things up for pure poetry. Pure poetry tends to like to uh, pretty soft pace and settle. Uh, St. Armand's Key likes to uh, gun it a little bit, and I think the two of them sort of cancel each other out because St. Armand's Key I don't think has the end kick uh, to take this field down, and it's just too big a field. However, if it goes off the turf, then I want a front runner like St. Armand's Key in the mix. And that's what that K-Rit means. These are horses that if it does get off the turf, perhaps we upgrade uh, from their uh, slate if it's on the turf. Now, Incinerator uh, has yet to run on turf, but he is by Flame Away. And Flame Away is awesome with first-time turfers. Um, at 15 to 1, that's an outstanding price. Um, and I think we, we look for value in races this big, and I think Incinerator uh, makes a lot of sense here. Now, if this goes off the turf, you like him even better. You obviously won't get that price, but uh, Incinerator, I think, is one you have to use either way. Uh, Beyond Stoked uh, has been uh, pretty competitive, and it's interesting to note that his best race did come with the use of Lasix, and he does get it here. Um, I haven't liked. I, I haven't uh, disliked what I've seen from him, and uh, particularly that race with uh, Aramar a couple back uh, when he was on Lasix, he looked pretty good to me. So uh, I think uh, he looms as one you want to think about here. Um, and again, if it goes off the turf, this is one you would upgrade uh, from uh, from his chances on the turf. Uh, deadpan, I, I don't know that I'm that, that excited about Deadpan, but this is another one getting Lasix that I think is going to help. Um, and it's Mark Cassie on a, a decent-sized stakes day. 
and you've got Joel Rosario aboard. So I think deadpan is one that you want to think about using. Royal Majesty, um, I didn't think that Colonel Liam was bad. He had an extremely slow pace uh, to close into. And uh, I think that really worked against him. However, his late fraction did improve. And I think this is one logical to expect a move forward in here. This is Bill Mott on a big stakes day. So uh, I think Royal Majesty is certainly one that you want to consider. I don't know that I'd use him off the turf, but um, I think on he, he looms a, a logical threat. Moonlight, um, obviously, if this goes off the turf, Moonlight gets upgraded big time. But uh, on the turf, really the question I have with Moonlight is the will to win. I've seen this horse run some decent races and he just can't get over the top. And um, that's really my biggest question is about his will to win. Now, uh, you're going to get a short price, and that's also a, a negative, but he does loom as one that just you have to consider. You really don't have much of a choice, but um, I like others to win this race, but I think he's one that you have to use. Now, from our also eligibles, breakout uh, is another one. If this goes off the turf, I would upgrade, but he is definitely progressing, and uh, I like his chances in here if he draws in. Uh, Tiffery, uh, or Tiffery, however you pronounce it, uh, I think is unbelievable value at 12 to 1. And I really like this horse if he draws in. I think he, you upgrade big time. And I wouldn't mind using him on the dirt as well. But this is a race that we absolutely have to spread in. And certainly there's a lot of options in a 16-horse field. Um, I could even think about Gorilla Trek. Don't really like what I've seen on the running lines, but it's Phil Bauer at Keeneland. He's killing it right now, and you are getting 20 to 1. If you want to take it out one further, Gorilla Trek is possibly one to use. But it looks to me like the meat of the order is in the, uh, the pace pressers, the ones about mid-pack, and uh, there should be a big cavalry charge late. And, of course, anything can happen. Uh, on a race when you have this type of field for the last race of the pick five so we'll try to cover it as much as we possibly can so if we look at our ticket here's what we're going to do um, I'm going to single BG Warrior in the Giants Causeway right off the bat and this is uh, this is the kind of day you know particularly that eighth race which I do not like at all um, I think we just are, are going to go for it early if we get BG Warrior comes in, then we're looking pretty good. Uh, that eighth race, just anything can happen in that one. That's the one that probably concerns me the most. So we'll, we'll go three, five, seven. We'll take the two McPeaks with um, Classic Catch, and who I don't really like a lot, but in that field, I just that race, I just don't like anybody. Uh, so who knows what will happen there. Uh, leg three, race nine, the Jenny Wiley, we're going to use... Uh, surge capacity, and we're going to use Didier. English Rose, I think, is, is certainly a possibility, but uh, this is a case where the, the what I saw out of that horse seems kind of workmanlike, and uh, I don't know that it really has an edge. Charlie Appleby brings a whole string to Keeneland, so maybe this is just one. Well, we'll spring her along, let's see. But I think surge capacity, if he run, she runs back to uh, her prior form looms very large here as well as Didier who's perfect at the distance so we'll take those two in the Lexington 289 I think it's a top heavy race it's logically one of those three uh, probably the one the ones with the more urgency are the eight and nine if you want to shorten it uh, the wine steward I you know it doesn't this race doesn't really impact him one way or the other except he's a nice horse so maybe eight nine if you want to go that way and then leg five will spread and we'll just if we're alive at this point now we've got a shot at a really nice payday particularly we get bg warrior home at a price then we're looking really good so we'll go three four five nine and ten and then if we can draw in uh, the 13 and 16, I think we absolutely have to include. Now, I've included an option if this comes off the turf. Uh, the Jenny Wiley or the Giants Causeway, uh, your guess is as good as mine what to do there. But for the last race, I would go 3, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, we're going to move up St. Armand's Key because in these type of races, oftentimes they're one on the front end. And it uh, looks to me the most logical to do it from there. 
and then the 13 and 16 I think will be fine you can draw them in either way so uh, if this stays on the turf for the whole day it's a $45 ticket um, and again I think this is a case you know there's just so many ways to go you could spread to the cows come home and it's just you know it, it, there's a couple real sketchy races in here so uh, let's just go for it early on we hit it great now we've got a shot uh, at a really nice payout try to go against the grain a little bit in um, in the uh, in the seventh race and then hopefully we can get a price home in the 11th and it should make for a really good ticket that eighth race i don't know uh just don't really there's nobody appealing to me in that one and uh hopefully uh we'll uh we'll come up with a kenny mcpeak at a price <laughs> that's what we're really hoping for more than anything else and uh just given the crazy nature of this pick five i think we'll just go for it and uh with the single early on and we'll just see if that bears fruit for us and uh, if we are alive going into the last leg we do have plenty of bullets in the gun so uh we'll just hope for the best i uh, hope our analysis helps you with your own wagering strategy and i wish you the best of luck as always and if you do like content like this please like and subscribe and thanks to all of you recently come on board we really do appreciate it um we are going to have a lot of content leading up to the derby uh we're going to start with our individual deep dive of all the entrants uh for the derby we'll break them down uh, every way possible we will also have a uh, replay series in other words uh you'll have all the replays available to you for each region louisiana florida arkansas california and new york and then we will, uh, that'll all be preliminaries to our deep dive as we normally do every year. Form, class, speed, and pace will break all the horses down by each element of handicapping. So that should give us a, a pretty comprehensive and a, a pretty good base from which to make our uh, our final strategy for the Derby. This is going to be a really interesting one this year. Uh, there's a lot of question marks that need to be answered. So hopefully in our analysis, we can come up with the right answer. That's it from here. I uh, hope all is well with you, and uh, we'll be on uh, be on the lookout for more content from Right at the Wire. And I'll talk to you soon. And until then, be well.